nevertheless it is there always it sleeps within the mind of the savage then as he unfolds it begins to throw out its light in you the candidate it is fighting hard to have its beams pierce through the material coverings when the real self begins to arouse itself from its sleep its dreams vanish from it and it begins to see the world as it is and to recognize itself in reality and not as the distorted things of its dreams the savage and barbarian are scarcely conscious of the eye they are but a little above the animal in point of consciousness and their eye is almost entirely a matter of the consciousness of the wants of the body the satisfaction of the appetites the gratification of the passions the securing of personal comfort the expression of lust savage power etc in the savage the lower part of the instinctive mind is the seed of the eye see fourteen lessons for explanation of the several mental planes of man if the savage could analyze his thoughts he would say that the eye was the physical body the said body having certain feelings wants and desires the eye of such a man is a physical eye the body representing its form and substance not only is this true of the savage but even among so-called civilized men of today we find many in this stage they have developed powers of thinking and reasoning but they do not live in their minds as do some of their brothers they use their thinking powers for the gratification of their bodily desires and cravings and really live on the plane of the instinctive mind such a person may speak of my mind or my soul not from a high position where he looks upon these things from the standpoint of a master who realizes his real self but from below from the point of view of the man who lives on the plane of the instinctive mind and who sees above himself of the higher attributes to such people the body is the eye their eye is bound up with the senses and that which comes to them through the senses of course as man advances in culture and civilization his senses become educated and are satisfied only with more refined things while the less cultivated man is perfectly satisfied with the more material and gross sense gratification much that we call cultivation and culture is not but a cultivation of a more refined form of sense gratification instead of a real advance in consciousness and unfoldment it is true that the advanced student and master is possessed of highly developed senses often far surpassing those of the ordinary man but in such cases the senses have been cultivated under the mastery of the will and are made servants of the ego instead of things hindering the progress of the soul they are made servants instead of masters as man advances in the scale he begins to have a somewhat higher conception of the eye he begins to use his mind and reason and he passes on to the mental plane his mind begins to manifest upon the plane of intellect he finds that there is something within him that is higher than the body he finds that his mind seems more real to him than does the physical part of him and in times of deep thought and study he is able almost to forget the existence of the body in this second stage man soon becomes perplexed he finds problems that demand an answer but as soon as he thinks he has answered them the problems present themselves in a new phase and he is called upon to explain his explanation the mind even although not controlled and directed by the will has a wonderful range but nevertheless man finds himself traveling around and around in a circle and realizes that he is confronted continually by the unknown this disturbs him and the higher the stage of book learning he attains the more disturbed does he become the man of but little knowledge does not see the existence of many problems that force themselves before the attention of the man of more knowledge and demand an explanation for him the tortures of the man 
who has attained the mental growth that enables him to see the new problems and the impossibility of their answer cannot be imagined by one who has not advanced to that stage the man in this stage of consciousness thinks of his i as a mental thing having a lower companion the body he feels that he has advanced but yet this i does not give him the answer to the riddles and questions that perplex him and he becomes most unhappy such men often develop into pessimists and consider the whole life as utterly evil and disappointing a curse rather than a blessing pessimism belongs to this plane for neither the physical plane man or the spiritual plane man have this curse of pessimism the former man has no such disquieting thoughts for he is almost entirely absorbed in gratifying his animal nature while the latter man recognizes his mind as an instrument of himself rather than as himself and knows it to be imperfect in its present stage of growth he knows that he has in himself the key to all knowledge locked up in the ego and which the trained mind cultivated developed and guided by the awakened will may grasp as it unfolds knowing this the advanced man no longer despairs and recognizing his real nature and his possibilities as he awakens into consciousness of his powers and capabilities he laughs at the old despondent pessimistic ideas and discards them like a worn-out garment man on the mental plane of consciousness is like a huge elephant who knows not his own strength he could break down barriers and assert himself over nearly any condition or environment but in his ignorance of his real condition and power he may be mastered by a punny driver or frightened by a rustling of a piece of paper when the candidate becomes an initiate when he passes from the purely mental plane onto the spiritual plane he realizes that the i the real self is something higher than either body or mind and that both of the latter may be used as tools and instruments by the ego or i this knowledge is not reached by purely intellectual reasoning although such efforts of the mind are often necessary to help in the unfoldment and the masters so use it the real knowledge however comes as a special form of consciousness the candidate becomes aware of the real i and this consciousness being attained he passes to the rank of the initiates when the initiate passes the second degree of consciousness and begins to grow into a realization of his relationship to the whole when he begins to manifest the expansion of self then he is on the road to mastership in the present lesson we shall endeavor to point out to the candidate the methods of developing or increasing the realization of this i consciousness this first degree work we give the following exercises or development drills for the candidate to practice he will find that a careful and conscientious following of these directions will tend to unfold in him a sufficient degree of the i consciousness to enable him to enter into higher stages of development and power all that is necessary is for the candidate to feel within himself the dawn of the awakening consciousness or the awareness of the real self the higher stages of the i consciousness come gradually for once on the path there is no retrogression or going backward there may be pauses on the journey but there is no such thing as actually losing that which has once gained on the path this i consciousness even in its higher stages is but a preliminary step toward what is called illumination and which signifies the awakening of the initiate to a realization of his actual connection with the relation to the whole the full sight of the glory of the i is but a faint reflected glow of illumination the candidate once that he enters fully into the eye